This is going to be a video on the two types of gas mask sort of adjuster straps. Um, what keep them on your head, sort of harness, if you want to call it that. Um, and there's primarily two types. A rubber hood type, which is known as a helmet mask, although you could probably call them a hood mask, I think that may make some more sense. And you have sort of strap masks with harnesses on. Um, and this is the more common method, um, but with straps they can really vary in quality on the masks. Some have really weird strap systems, others use rubber that's really uncomfortable. Ones like these sort of M9 type masks have the, um, you know, like six point sort of elasticated straps which are really comfortable. Um, so this is a Finnish M61 V3 and this is obviously a GP5. So um, let's go into this one first. Now this is mostly an older type design. Very few masks use this now as far as I'm aware. Um, but during sort of World War II, a few masks were designed like this. I think there was a Russian World War I mask that had this kind of design. And then the Soviets in the Cold War decided this is the design they really wanted to go with for most of their masks. So the idea to put on is really simple. It's that the rubber of the mask is smaller than your head, so you stretch it over your head, and then once it's on, it will be airtight. Now, again, gas masks don't work very well if you have a lot of hair. I probably need to shave mine off, it's getting a bit too long. But just to demonstrate this. There you go. I'd much rather not have hair on for this, but it forms an airtight seal well enough because the mask falls tight onto my head. And where the mask is pulled tight onto my head, you know, there's no way for the air to get in and out. Apart from through the mask. So, there we go. That's how a GP5 operates. I'm sure you've all got one of these and sort of know how it works, but it's a very simple design. Now, the advantages to a design like this is you don't need to make head straps for them. You just simply make more rubber when you make the mask. However, that is either good or bad depending on, you know, the person who is wanting the mask or making the mask. For example, um, Germany during World War II, the reason their masks used less and less rubber as time went on, um, especially if you look at the civilian masks, like the difference between a VM-37 and a VM-40, is because they did not have enough rubber, so they had to cut the cost down by making the mask smaller and putting straps on them. So you could imagine if they did that with a GP5, say the line here, roughly around there, would be all the mask was, and then there'd be straps on it. That'd be actually quite interesting if the Soviets made something like that. But obviously, the classic GP5 design is what everyone's fame for, you know, familiar with. So it wasn't just the Soviets that did these masks; but it was primarily them. Um, some of the Swiss masks from Cold War. There's a model that looks like a better version of a GP5 that I get my hands on if I ever saw one for sale. But um, for the most part. You know, it was a Soviet thing that they really liked, making helmet design masks. A good advantage to those is they work with pretty much any military helmet, because the uh, mask material is so thin, in a sense, and it's not bulky that when you put a helmet on it will go on fine. So here we have, um, and this is a bit wet because I cleaned it prior to doing this video, um, this is Finnish M61 V3, and it has a six-point elasticated head harness, which is a design that's probably the best design available. So what you can do is keep have the straps at their loosest possible value, pull the mask over your face, then just simply pull the straps until the mask is tight. Now the advantage to this is obviously that you can pull one strap tighter than another if you want to make a really good sort of airtight seal or your face is a bit of a weird shape. You know, so it's really good in that regard. The reason I like head harnesses with straps like this is they're fairly easy to undo the straps as well. You simply kind of pull back on the bit where the buckle is and you should be able to get, there we go, the straps to loosen. So it's quite a simple design, you know, and it works well. Why more masks didn't use this design, I don't know. Because as I was saying, lots of masks use straps, but the issue was... The straps on some masks are just really poorly designed. So, we'll go over some of the types of straps you can get. So, the ideal thing is a six point head harness like this. Um, some of the head harnesses on the actual masks now are sort of more skull cap like, they're bigger, sort of, you know, almost like a parachute shape thing, um, which is designed to make the mask more comfortable, I guess. Um, but yeah, you want really a six point head harness. Five point head harnesses can be fine where it goes directly there on the mask. Six points just means you can tighten it a bit more in maybe one side compared to the other. 
I found five point head harnesses to be mostly fine. It really depends how well they've been implemented on the mask, like most of the features. So, um, yeah, six point head harness that's kind of elasticated is ideal. Some masks have rubber ones very similar to this. And rubber head harnesses can vary in quality depending a lot on how they've been made. So, things like the GP7 and PMK are just awful. And then things like the S10's rubber is a lot better. The Israeli M15, for example, the rubber straps are better. You basically want something that you can adjust fairly easily, whereas some straps end up kind of being this really irritating thing where you have to take the mask off, you know, and sort of do that. Work out how tight you need them prior to needing the mask, so you can just quickly put it, pull it on and pull it off. One of the advantage of elasticated straps is when it's done up on your head and you've got the right tightness, often you only need to undo two of the straps to take the mask off, and then you can, you know, like stretch it back on using the straps, and then only tighten, you know, the two last straps. But elasticated straps are great because it means that you can, um, you know, simply it's a very simple process for taking the mask on and off, assuming they've done it correctly. As I said, there are a lot of differences in the strap designs. Um, some masks, as I said, are five point, some point are six point. You have weird things like the French M51, where you've got like the weird clips that you have to like pull down the clips and then clip them. That'd be another design. But for the most part, it's either straps or it's like the helmet style hood design. The helmet style hood design is very good in the sense that you can put it on very quickly without needing to adjust it as long as the mask fits your head. Um, Whereas straps like this obviously need adjusting, on a mask like this that's absolutely fine because they're good straps that are easy to adjust. But as said, if they're poorly implemented straps then they become a lot worse because it's really difficult to get them just right or be comfortable and everything like that. Um, another thing is with straps, as much as people don't like GP5s because they're like, oh it pulls at my hair, some masks of straps really will pull at your hair. Um, if you know, I find out as much as I like the Israeli M15, Unless I've got my head shaved, when I tighten the straps on either side, you can really feel your hair actually getting pulled into the buckle, which is not pain, uh, you know, it's not pleasant, it's painful. Um, but there you go, that's the two designs on masks, either really straps or the helmet hood design. There's probably a few other weird designs out there. And um, This is not going into industrial masks, if you go into there, you have the hoods with like blower units and everything like that. But for actual conventional gas masks, you know, air purifying, respirators you generally have one or two of those type of designs. You also get some that are weird hybrids where it's like a helmet style hood and then it's got a strap on the back that you tighten up afterwards to give it a better fit, but in general it's either one or the other.